Hey everybody, welcome to our second episode of Macademy, and today we're gonna to be having a look at photosynthesis. Now we know photosynthesis is broken down into two phases, the light dependent reactions, which require light to occur, and the light independent reactions, which can take place without light. So uh, we'll get started with the light dependent reactions. Now, first of all, you can see in our diagram here that we've got the chloroplast and the chloroplast is an organelle inside of the plant cell specifically and we've got a thylakoid which is a small structure inside of the chloroplast now there's lots of thylakoids that stack up inside of chloroplasts but they all look the same they all serve the same function the more thylakoids the more we can have uh, photosynthesis taking place so it starts out with the water molecule. We know water is essential for plant growth. So the water molecule is gonna diffuse into the cell and into the chloroplast. It's gonna come into the thylakoid. And when it reaches photosystem two, what we're gonna see is that light, okay, light energy that enters in is going to make contact with photosystem two. And photosystem two is gonna use this energy to break up the water molecule, which is gonna separate these hydrogen ions so they're going to flow out into the lumen of the thylakoid. And these electrons are going to jump into photosystem two. What we're left with is this oxygen atom, okay, which then binds up with another oxygen atom from the uh, next process. And that oxygen is going to diffuse out of the plant cell, which is where oxygen is be re being released by plants. It's through that process right there. So, these hydrogens are going to float around inside here. We're going to see how things start changing for them in just a second. But what happens to these electrons? Basically, as these electrons start bouncing through the electron chain, there's a mobile electron carrying it across to the cytochrome complex, which is here in the middle. And that's going to draw hydrogens inside, but then the electron jumps across. And that hydrogen, though, we know ends up getting stuck on the inside. The second electron is going to move across through that electron mobile carrier into the cytochrome complex, and that's going to draw another hydrogen ion through. The electron moves through, the hydrogen moves in inside. You can see the hydrogen starting to build up on the inside here. These electrons then, after doing all that work, after doing the work of pulling the hydrogens inside, okay, they're going to get re-energized by some more light energy that comes in Okay, and makes contact at photosystem one. Now photosystem one, yeah, it re-energizes these electrons and they're moved into, through another mobile electron carrier, this enzyme called NADP plus reductase. NADP plus reductase. You can remember that it goes with photosynthesis because of this little P that's in there, right? In cellular respiration, there was NAD plus, but in photosynthesis, we have NADP plus, all right? So NAD plus takes those electrons. What does it do? It takes NAD plus, all right? And it takes some hydrogen. And when it brings these two things together with these electrons, we have a reaction that takes place. And what we see forming is NADPH. So you can see now that the NAD plus and the H plus have been joined together with those couple of electrons. So this NADPH now is a mobile electron carrier. And we're gonna see how that plays into things as we continue to move along. But let's look back here at our thylakoid. So inside of our thylakoid, we had all of those hydrogen ions building up. Well, just like we saw in cellular respiration, those hydrogens are gonna flow through ATP synthase. And as those hydrogen ions flow through ATP synthase back into the stroma of the chloroplast, it starts having ATP synthase work. It allows ATP synthase to function. And when ATP synthase starts to function, what it does is draw in ADP with some phosphate that's also floating around inside the chloroplast, and it recombines those to produce ATP. An ATP we know is an energy carrying molecule. So that ATP has now been formed, okay? So the more electrons we move through the electron transport chain, the more hydrogen ions we have pumping inside. Those hydrogen ions then fill up the inside of the thylakoid and they flow out through ATP synthase, helping it function. And when it functions, ATP synthase combines ADP with P to produce ATP. And we know that's the energy carrying molecule, as we said a second ago. 
So that's the light dependent reactions. What happens though with all this NADPH and all this ATP? All right, we're not just making it for no reason. We've got to, we've got to, the plant is going to use it for something. First thing that happens is that carbon dioxide enters into the chloroplast and three carbon dioxides are actually going to enter in here. And in three carbon dioxides, we've got a one carbon molecule, but we've got three of them, right? So the little circle here represents a carbon atom, okay? And what's going to happen here is that they're going to combine with three RUBPs. And RUBP okay, is a five carbon molecule. So this five carbon molecule, right, we can see here, here's our little circles again representing a carbon atom, okay, and we've got three of these, right? Then using the help of Rubisco, these RUBPs are going to join together with the CO2. And when they join together with the CO2, they're going to immediately break down into six three carbon molecules that we call PGA molecules. These are our professional golfers. So these molecules we said just a moment ago, they were, remember, three one carbons, each combines onto the end of one of these five carbons. So we end up with three six carbon molecules, but those immediately break down to produce six three carbon molecules. So you can see that we basically have just taken those three six carbon molecules and split them in half, right? So now we've got our six three carbon molecules. Well, what happens here is that we're gonna undergo a transformation, okay, a conversion from these six PGAs to six PGAL molecules. So there's a small transformation. I like to remember it as the Professional Golfers Association becomes the Professional Golfers Association for ladies, all right? And what happens in this situation, let's just move our hydrogens out of the way for the time being so they don't get us confused. These six PGALs, okay, these six PGALs are still those three carbon molecules. And in order to do this, we're going to have to input six ATP molecules. So those six ATP molecules. So six of these guys that we were making before, right, in the light dependent reactions are now going to be used okay, to power this conversion. So it's going to require energy. And in order to make this conversion, we're also going to have to put in six NADH molecules. So again, just like we saw the NADH molecules that were being formed in the light dependent reactions, we're now going to be using okay, those molecules in the light independent reactions in order to make these chemical changes take place. Now, where do we go from here? These six PGAL molecules then continue, all right? One of them is going to drop off. One of them leaves the cycle, okay, which we call the Calvin cycle, right? And we have one PGAL that just stays on the bottom, okay? But we know that if we lost one from six, how many have we got left over? You got it. We got five more, right? And those five remaining PGALs, okay, are going to continue along the cycle. They're going to be the ones that keep the cycle moving around. So we're still going to have here five PGAL molecules. And that's these five PGAL molecules, we know they're still three carbon molecules. So we've now got five three carbon molecules, but we've got to convert that into three five carbon molecules. So again, we've got to have a conversion taking place here. So this conversion, okay, from these five three carbon molecules to the three five carbon molecules is going to require yet again a little bit of energy. So here we go again, okay, this is going to take three more ATPs and these three ATPs are going to be put into the process. So again, using these same ATPs, okay, not the same ones, but some more that were being produced, right, by the light dependent reactions, three more of them are going to be used here in order to make this conversion from PGAL back to RUBP. And then our RUBP is going to go ahead again right and bring in three more carbons okay from three more carbon dioxide so the plant is continually taking in carbon 
which are then being used to produce this one pgal molecule down here at the bottom. So three carbons in at the top, three carbons out at the bottom. And what ends up happening okay, with all of these carbons is that when we put them together, we're going to take these pgals and just to move it out here a little bit, these pgals are going to be used by the plant to produce different types of sugars. So we're going to make things like glucose, we're going to make things like starch, so the plant can start producing all these sugars and the, the stored chemical energy that it's going to need for the rest of its cellular processes. So that right there, in a nutshell, is how photosynthesis works.